Hello. I'm going to get right to it because you are here because you've got a big question, or it might be a small question, but you want a question to be answered that is in alignment with your path. And a way to get that question answered is by asking your intuition. How do you do that? Non-dominant hand writing. How do you do that? Let's do that together. Housekeeping, if you haven't subscribed, please do and click the bell so that you can be alerted of all of our videos that are devoted to getting into alignment so that we can co-create intentions, speed up manifestations, and get on our path of guilt-free thriving. Let's get to it. So we already talked about why we use non-dominant handwriting and I'm going to go over how we use it, but I want to stress that it doesn't have to be for big questions. You can use non-dominant handwriting for, should I go out with him? Or should I wear red on this job interview? Or do I really need to watch Netflix tonight? Sometimes the answer is yes. They can be for small questions and they can be for big questions. Should I move to Prague? Am I ready for a dog? I like that I rhymed. The point being that conversing and communicating with your intuition is not an inconvenience. It is a gift to you, to yourself, and to your higher self. So the more that you do it, the more aware you're going to become and the easier it is going to be, just like anything that we practice. So let's get into the how. The first step is that we are going to write with our dominant hand. I am a lefty, south pause, what's up? We are going to write our question in our journal, but notice that I'm holding it like this. Let me just find a free page. I'm going to write it in my journal this way because if you are a southpaw, writing with the binding centrally aligned is very uncomfortable and you end up having to start over here because of this binding. So instead, you'll write with this hand. Now, if you're a right-handed person and you're writing for, you're using your non-dominant hand, which is your left hand, you might take, you might say, oh, the binding is annoying. No, you may not even notice the binding. You might say, it's just that I'm uncomfortable anyway because I'm writing with my non-dominant hand. But this is actually a factor in this process that you don't need to have. So just write with the binding at the top of the page. But let's do step one. That wasn't step one. Step one is just to write the question. And so my question is going to be, What's a question that I have right now? Okay, yes, yes. I have a date tomorrow and our options are to go into the Black Forest, into a little village and explore, or to have a picnic on the lake. Which one do I want to do? <laughs> I love this question because I really wanna know which one's gonna be more in line with me, more aligned with me. So my question is, should I, with my left hand, should I? Now, this question seems really basic, but actually by asking my intuition, it might say, you're trying to be cute. Honey, you don't hike, you know that. What are you doing in the black forest? Get to the lake. Or it might be saying, you hate eating outdoors. Why are you even thinking about a picnic? Get your little butt up the hill to the black forest village and have a nice lunch in a little restaurant in a brasserie. Hmm, I don't know. Right now, for me, I could go either way. So I wrote this question and I wrote it in cursive. Some of us don't know cursive. That's fine. You can write it in print. But I did write it with my dominant hand. Step two, we write our answer choices with our dominant hand first. Part of this non-dominant writing exercise is to allow the other to surface, to reveal itself. And when we're writing a different way, it might help us think a different way. So picnic, forest, no, I'll put um, village, blank line, blank line. Okay. Picnic, village, blank line, blank line. And now the fun part. Step three, we're going to use our non-dominant hand and we're going to rewrite the answers. Picnic, village, town. Hmm. Is there one more option that comes to mind? No, nothing else comes to mind. So, my answers. 
Picnic came out in print, very declarative. Village came out in cursive, but a bit of a mess, having trouble reading that. Town came out very gnarly, and I couldn't think of a last thing, which means my answer is picnic because it came out the most clear. So that is what we're going to do tomorrow. We have to tackle big questions, and we don't have a multiple choice answer. So we do have the free writing option. I have a really big question. There's someone who I care about deeply, but I think we're not a fit. What do I do? Do I continue on or do I let it go? Maybe if I give it more time, it will get better. Maybe I've already given it enough time. This is where non-dominant handwriting also matters. So let's walk through the process. Step one, write the question. <sighs> With my dominant hand, is it time to let go of, I'm not going to say his name. Okay, I wrote the question. Now the answer. I kind of played with some of the answers, but those were just musings. I'm going to let my non-dominant hand do its thing. Okay, and here's what I got. This gibberish. And it's backwards, and of course I'm going to show you with a screenshot, but here's what it says. Came out in cursive. I love you so much, and I know this is hard, but you will stay the course on this one. Patience, heart. That's the answer. Let me read it again. I love you so much, and I know this is hard, but you will stay the course on this one. Patience, heart. Okay. And so it is. I hope that this process, these two ways of using non-dominant handwriting guide you to your alignment, guide you to the path that you're meant to be on. The more you do it, the more you will have faith in it, the more it will be empowered to speak back to you. And as I said before, the more awareness you will have on your path and the easier it will be to stay on your path and in your alignment so that you can co-create and speed up manifestations that will bring you farther and farther along on this guilt-free thriving life journey. So what are some burning questions that you have that you want to answer with non-dominant handwriting and did any answers avail themselves that you were surprised to receive? Write in the comments and let us know what happened for you. As we journey on this path of guilt-free thriving and we communicate more and more easily with our intuition and take more and more risks, we might get a little overwhelmed or maybe we're afraid to even start because we know that our lives are going to change. You have to change your life to change your life, right? So if you want some help in beginning strongly, in enjoying a great beginning and bringing gentleness to your, the beginnings in your life, please download my free guide. It's a guide to great beginnings. Feel good to do great. Thank you for watching.